guys, this was definitely unexpected. <laughs> so that's why I'm laughing. Okay. Let me call it in on the radio, because we've been very lucky, and I know there were a lot of people very desperate to come and follow up. Now I think this is a smaller pack. Um, I'm gonna try. I'm gonna. I'm gonna try and go a little bit further up to just to see how many individuals there are around here. I see some blood on your face. You've definitely been eating. So sorry. I'm just gonna call them in on the radio, like I said, just to let everybody else have a bit of a chance. Stations are located, my Dutch. Uh, spaghetti Junction. This was very unexpected. <laughs> but what a great surprise! <laughs> it's just one MOVA and about six individuals. No, they're fairly static for now. Okay, copy. Alright. So we've done our good ranger duty and we've informed everyone else of what's going on. Guys, I just said that you were static. Don't start running. <laughs> Alrighty. I think this might be the initial pack that we saw because there's only six here and I wonder if perhaps there are three more in the, uh, up at the top where we can see them. But very nice to have found you guys again. Proves that when you start stop looking for things and they come around. Alright. Let's follow them around. Rajni, you're wondering if a pack will tolerate members from another pack. Well, there is a lot of... Indeed, here are some of the other ones. So I think this is the one that we actually started with. with. Um, there's a lot of migration in between packs and animals will go from one pack to the other but as long as they remain submissive then that tends to be okay if they want to try and get into a new area. Uh, part of not a new area into a new pack. Um, however, the, the, like the case that we had today, where they were all of them fighting with one another, even if we couldn't see it, and some of the rangers reported that this is what's happening. When you have two formed in packs that are pretty set, it's not. Uh, they will not accept another pack coming into their particular area. Hello. Are you coming to inspect us? I think maybe they'll probably look at us and be like, ugh, this human stink. Beautiful. Alright. They're all walking around us. Gray, you're wondering if wild dogs descend from wolves like other dogs. My common guess would be that yes, that they all come from a common ancestor because they're all cannons. However, I'm not too sure how closely related they are. Oh, there's a lot more wild dogs here. Okay, so maybe this is not the same pack that we saw earlier on. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. Ooh. I'm not comfortable with you sneezing as much, wild dog. I'm just hoping this is spring. All right, let's just go a little bit further on. Rex, they've just stepped on those mud wallows close to close to Twin Dams Road. So if you come up Twin Dams, then you'll see us there. Well, this is definitely not the same pack that we started off with this morning. Sorry guys, I didn't mean to push you away. Um, I'm gonna have to think about where is probably... If we go around here, this is probably the best view if we go to our left, because then we'll be able to see all of them. Beautiful. Well, this was quite a, <laughs> quite a bonus. Did not expect to find them again. And this is not where they were running. So, I don't understand who we're looking at and what's been going on or how fast they've been running, but they've definitely fooled all of us. I wouldn't be surprised if some of them actually went all the way to Sydney's Dam and then all the way back here, and then that's what happens when you run for too long. You get very tired, and then you have to sleep for a very long time. Look at those slender legs. Amazing to think that such a little body is able to run for such a long time. Alright, um, VM, I'm gonna go to our left here so that we can have probably a better look of all of them. So I'm just gonna go around 
Hopefully that'll be better. Now we can choose. I've got all the dogs here. Yeah. Eleven of them. So I wonder if perhaps it could have happened that some of the pack actually split up and then they went off running somewhere else. Wouldn't be rare for that to happen amongst wild dogs. And then later on, as they <laughs> get tired of running around, likely they're gonna start looking for each other. Because the initial ones that we saw, the pack of nine, or when they were just nine, they started uh, contact calling and they make that very interesting call. They go, woo, 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 and they start making a call like that and they were looking for some more um, pack members. So I wonder, I wonder actually what we've been looking at the whole morning. It seems like it's been very confusing. <laughs> Rajni, you wonder um, if the policies are different when intervening with um, animals that are very rare, maybe in comparison to some of their animals. Um, mm, that is a tough question. So normally, for example, the problem with wild dog is they get a lot of snares, so that is one thing, and they get affected a lot by diseases that are brought in by domestic dogs, so diseases that are not commonly found out here in the wild, like distemper and rabies. So when that is the case, they do, um, or they have done preventive treatment just to make sure that these animals or that these packs don't entirely um, disappear because often they will come into contact with uh, common dogs or domestic dogs. So there is a bit of a, that involved, particularly in the Kruger area. And I know there's been a lot of effort to try and um, vaccinate them against uh, distemper and rabies. But it's it's hard to, to find them because these are the type of vaccines that you've got to vaccinate them more than once. And I know that Grant and Tristan have had a wonderful time trying to look for wild dogs in some areas of the Kruger and some reserves outside of Kruger just to try and be able to <laughs> to dot them and then just give them the necessary inoculations. Now, uh, in terms of if a reserve would intervene, I think it would probably be just analyzed on a, um, on a, uh, what do you call this? On a, on every specific case, it depends on what exactly is happening. So for example, if a wild dog were eaten or hurt by a pride of lions, likely they would not intervene because that is nature and nature has to run its course. And uh, particularly the res reserve that we're in, they try to minimize their intervention just to keep this as wild as possible. Uh, however, with a disease with something like rabies or something like that, which is highly contagious, and they would probably just get involved and try to find out what is happening before too many things happen or that they spread it onto other species. That would be my guess. But like I said, they normally just analyze it and decide on, a, on every specific case. So there's not one general rule, but um, in terms of that, having, having said that the, the common denominator is if they can avoid intervening because it's a natural thing that will occur, doesn't matter if humans are around or not around, then they'll leave it to, to follow its own course. If it's something else, then they might assess it and then intervene. Look at them. Oh, it's leaping very tightly around here. Some of them have got some, still some red in their faces, so I'm sure they've been eating some things and causing chaos all around. <laughs> 